paramotors safe? No. Are paramotor safe? Yes. <laughs> so there are a ton of paramotors that are horribly unsafe. And there's one that's incredibly ridiculously so safe, I have way, way, way over 11,000 flights doing things nobody else on earth can do. I've never even been injured. You want me to start again? No, keep going. You're giving me the weird looking face. I smiled, I thought it was funny. Fine, okay, I will continue. <laughs> we won't even edit that out. So, there's huge differences in the gear and the training. You cannot just say, oh, paramotors are this safe. Well, which freaking paramotor are you talking about? Which glider are you flying? Do you have a reserve? Do you have the skills? Can you actually kite up a wall? If you can't, you cannot prevent a collapse in flight. So the odds of you taking a collapse are thousands of times higher than the guy who has proper training where he learned to perfectly control the loading of the glider by balancing his butt and controlling it within an inch. So there's ways you can train in real actual glider control skills. The, the best training, you know, by time they get 25 to 60 hours or more learning every single detail. It's not the hours because it's not practice that makes perfect. It's perfect practice that makes perfect. So by time real super students get massive hours of glider control, they've dialed in every little piece to such an extent that they can pretty much kite all day long without ever taking a collapse, even if you wake them and prop wash them and, and run them through trashy rotor air. Because you start instinctively by reflexes responding to the glider. So why is that so incredibly important? Because active piloting is what makes you so much safer. If the glider gets hit with, say, a, uh, a surge, or say you go through a thermal, and that glider tries to pitch forward to a negative angle of attack where it would collapse, well, if you don't have the instant reflexes to stop it and pressurize it perfectly, it's just gonna collapse. So without proper skills, you are thousands and thousands of times more likely to take a collapse than the guy who does have the right skills. So are paramotors safe? Well, it's not paramotors. It's very specific if you get the best training, which I have to name, super training specifically, and you know, do your research, look at the skills. It's not about, oh, my training's better. It's look at the skills of my students, compare the skills of my students to the skills of other people's students. Whoever is producing the best skills is the best instructor, that's the best training, go there. Well, you're not gonna find anything outside of super training, it just doesn't even exist. They're not even remotely close. Almost no other instructors can even do what our students can do. Challenge them, send them the video of super training and challenge them to try and do what our students. It's kind of hilarious. I've actually had people do that and send me the, uh, you know, the back and forth uh, emails and it's pretty hilarious to see what other instructors try and respond when they can't physically do what our students can do. So back to our paramotors safe. Yes, I have way over 11,000 flights, pushing all the limits, doing things nobody else on earth can do. I've never even been injured. And yeah, when you're racing cars, you're gonna crash. <laughs> when I'm pushing the limits and setting world records, I'm gonna crash, I'm gonna mess up. I have totally obliterated over a dozen flat top paramotors, just doing stupid stuff and pushing the limits and you know being crazy, having way too much fun. And I've still never been injured. Now tell me, what other sport can you totally mess up and pound in and get up and walk away from it and fly the next day? There's very, very few that are that forgiving and allow you to do that. So the sport is incredibly safe if you're talking about the real sport where you get the best and safest gear and real actual training. So let's talk about the gear. Why is the gear so incredibly important? Well. I've got a whole video series of the 304 reasons uh, competent pilots only fly flat tops. It's currently the only unit that is really designed to save your butt in every known scenario. So things like crumple zone, you got upwards of 18 inches of crumple zone under your butt. 
in a full stall, a certified glider, like a Dominator, only falls about 20 feet per second. So if you stall from 10,000 feet or 20,000 feet or 50 feet, it doesn't matter. You're only going to hit about like jumping off a one-story house roof in a full stall. Now, if you jump off your house roof and you land flat on your butt on the sidewalk, you're going to break your back or die. It's going to be ugly just jumping off the house roof. But now, imagine you did the same thing, but you got 18 inches of crumple zone under your butt. Then jumping off the house roof, it's like jumping off a house roof on a freaking dirt bike. <laughs> you can do that all day for fun. And yeah, oof, it's a pretty hard landing, but you got up and walked away to fly another day. So if you have a unit designed with that crumple zone, for example, then when you mess up, because you will, it's part of the sport, the odds are you're going to get up and walk away, no biggie. Just like me, every single time, way over 11,000 flights, no injury, and I have smashed so many cages. <laughs> I mean, it's really a cool sport because you crush your crumple zone, and that's the cheapest part. The expensive part's all protected by the crumple zone, and you. So you just buy a new crumple zone or buy a new cage piece, and bam, you're good to go fly again the next day. <laughs> And uh, so, if you have that, best safest gear, best training, that's why. Now, the glider is another huge thing. That is, you can't talk about the safety of the sport and not specify which glider you fly. Because there are totally uncertified class gliders, which are pretty much death traps. And then there's the safest gliders on the market, like the Dominator, which we all fly, we all recommend, because, I mean, that's what I put my own kids on. It's the safest glider we've ever found, and it has the very best performance. So you got all the fun and the capability and the highest level of safety. So if you're flying along, what are the odds you're going to take a collapse if you fly, say, 5,000 flights? 100% guaranteed it's going to happen. If you're up in the sky long enough, you're gonna go through some really funky butt wild air and active piloting will reduce that thousands of fold. So you'll prevent thousands and thousands more collapses than you would have without actual skills. But you can still get hit with something so fast and so violent that your glider collapses before you have time to recover from it. Well, the super safe glider just goes poof and pops right out and keeps on flying. That's what it's freaking designed to do. Where the total death trap, like so many, like, insane people fly, one collapse and the thing locks into a spiral straight down, face first at the ground. So, why do you think they die? Well, hello, they take a collapse, it dives straight, boom, face first into the ground. You take a collapse on the safest glider and it goes, poof, poof. You can watch the videos. I mean, there's literally massive experience with the Dominator. It's just incredible. There's actually video out there. You can watch people, like a guy who didn't have any proper training, uh, takes like a 95% collapse and it goes, whoop, whoop. it's recovered in less than one second. It kept flying straight and level and he didn't lose 10 feet of altitude. Safe glider, super duper safe and you got the performance. Death trap glider, you take one collapse and it does a backflip 180 and locks you face first into the ground. You hit the ground at between 80 and 105 miles an hour, you freaking die. So, is the sport safe? Well, freak no, and heck yeah. <laughs> it depends on what you're doing. It's all about which gear are you flying, which training did you get, did you make sure at super training that you graduate before you fly and you do actually go to someone that loves you enough to say, no, you're not ready? You, you, you know, really a good thing about training to ask, it's kind of a trick question. Hey, how many people don't pass your class? Oh, well, we guarantee you we're gonna have you in the air by the first day. Not the guy you wanna go to. If they're guaranteed they're gonna get you flying, what if you're an idiot? What if you're so horrifically uncoordinated, you're a bumbling duff war? Well, you don't want to go to the guy that guarantees they're going to get you flying. Oh yeah, you pay this and we're going to get you this. We're going to get you in the air on this day, blah. No, freak no. You want to go to the guy that says, dude, you ain't ready. 
Yeah, you paid for training. That's why you have the best guy in the world telling you, dude, you ain't ready. Just come back through, do it again. You only pay once at super training. You can keep coming back. We just keep on training you. So if you get the training right from someone who cares more about your life than they do about the money, it's an incredibly safe sport. If you go to the Joe Blow idiot that chucks you in the air and doesn't give a crap about your life, well, it's a horribly unsafe sport. So is paramotoring safe? Well, absolutely, if you're me. And absolutely not, if you're the other guy that isn't quite so bright. No, this sport's not for everyone. If you are below average, it is not for you. I get a very common question. Hey, how long does it take the average guy to become a good pilot? Never. The average guy doesn't become a good pilot. This is for people that are a little above average, a little bit sharper than the average guy. Aviation is not exactly for the guys that take a little bit of time to think about stuff. You need to be able to react quickly. You need to be an above average type of confident type A personality. You know, believe in yourself, not a scared wussy. This is not the sport for wussies. If you're all tense and freaking out, it's not for you, dude. And now, would that be a sales pitch? The other guys are like, oh yeah, guaranteed you're 80 years old, we'll get you flying. The honest guy says, dude, it ain't for you. It's not going to work. <laughs> you know, it's not my job to tell you you can't. It's my job to train you and tell you when you're ready to do it. So if you're 80 and you want to try it, I'll be happy to train you. But I'm going to be honest with you and I'm going to let you know if you're still not ready to go. And you might be that one in a million that can do it, but totally, yeah different thing. So very, very important. Training, gear, do it right. You got to be a little more than a hamburger short of a happy meal if you want to live in aviation. It's just the way it goes. So give us a call. We'll get you fixed up and make sure we stack all the odds in your favor.